Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be looking at um, a QNAP TVS 872XT. So this is an 8-bay NAS system and we're going to be walking you through the initial configuration and setup. Okay, so we're going to walk through the initial setup and deployment of our NAS drive. So, first thing we want to do is we're going to click on Start Smart Installation. This is the current version that we're on, which is the latest version. We're going to check for an update. You can see we're up to date, so we're going to click on Next. And we're going to give it a name. So, this one we're going to call it... Uh, give it a host name we're gonna just set a temporary password here So Greenwich Mean Time, that is correct, but we're just going to double check it, make sure we're set to London, which we are. We're going to synchronise with an internet pool server, and we're going to call this UK Pool NTP Org. Should be correct. And then we're going to click on Next. We're going to set a static IP address. We're going to set our primary DNS server to be 192.168.10.1 and our secondary DNS server to be Google. Click on next. Okay, so we haven't got anything connected via Thunderbolt at the moment, so we're going to leave that as it is. And we're going to allow Windows transfers, Mac and Linux, we're not going to be using any Linux servers, but we're going to be enabling Windows and Mac. And we're going to apply that configuration. <clears throat> we're going to initialize all the drives that we've got in there. Okay, so now we've reached 100%. Let's just wait for things to start up. Okay, so that's us completed the initial setup. So now we should be able to navigate to, let's just check QFinder Pro. Do a refresh, and there it is. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do a right click, and we're going to go down, and we're going to click on Login. We're going to go in with Admin, and then the details that we set up earlier, but we're going to change these. And there we go, so once we're in, we accept the uh, privacy policies and the data policies. Okay, so we just click through this and we're going to come back to this in a minute. So we're not going to allow them to collect our data. So we're going to close that down and we're going to close this down and we're going to close this down as well at the moment and that so we don't want to create a storage pool yet. Right, so now we're up and running. The first thing that we want to do is 
I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to sort out the administrator account. So we're going to go into users. And at the moment you can see the administrator account is enabled. So I'm just going to go in and change the password. Apply that. And then check it again. So. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to disable this account. So we're going to create a new user. And we're going to edit the permissions because we are administrator. Shared folder permissions. We've got no shared folders at the moment, so that's fine. And unrestricted apps. So we're going to create that new user. And then we're going to go into, we're going to need to log in with that user. So at the moment, I'm just going to log out because we're logged in as admin. <clears throat> and I'm going to log in with the new user credentials. Once we're logged in, we're going to disable that admin account. Close all of this stuff down at the moment. And we're going to go back into our users file. We're going to go into the admin account and we're going to say disable this account. And that's the first bit of security done. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we need to go in and create a storage pool. So we're going to skip that. And as you can see here, we've got uh, eight disks. We want to check the status of every disk. Just to make sure they all look good although it tells us at the top because they're all green. But I like to go through and make sure that the power on ours is set to zero to make sure that they're not used drives. We've got an M.2 drive and another M.2 drive. Okay, so that's fine. So we've got everything up and running and ready there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a storage pool. <clears throat> so as you saw there, to click on that, we get, when we're in overview on storage, you can click on this section over on the right here. So we're going to click on storage pool. And we're not going to add different types of drives, so we don't need Q tier. Thick or thin volume and iSCSI volume, but we're going to be just clicking on next. We're going to select all of our disks and we're not using a, um, we're not using SED. Um, because our disks don't support it, but we are going to just run through and make sure that they are all showing the correct capacity, which they are. So we're going to select all of them apart from our M.2 drives. Let's go for RAID 6 with no hot spare, and that gives us 98 terabytes of storage. <clears throat> 98 terabytes so we lose a disk basically with uh, RAID 6 but we can lose two disks in the in the array so I think uh, 98 terabytes is probably good for that makes good business sense to have maximum protection okay so we'll stick with RAID 6 and we'll stick with the full disk capacity so that means we can lose two um, without losing any data. So let's click on next. And our alert threshold for that storage pool is we're going to set it to 90%. I'm going to select next. 
Okay, so that gives us a total of 98 terabytes. Let's create that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to click on this option down here that says cache acceleration. Click on the plus. I'm going to click on next. We're going to scroll down and we're going to select our two M.2 drives. These are 500 gig each. And we're going to select read write and we're going to make sure that it's set to RAID 1 so that we protect the data that's in the cache. And that's all there is to it. We're going to click on next. We're going to select over provisioning, leave that at 10%. And we're going to change random I.O. to all I.O which is because we're going to be using it for file serving and not media streaming, but file serving and um, more strenuous uh, jobs than random I.O. Uh, block, bypass block size, um, we're going to leave as standard and um, the cache replacement policy, we're going to leave, we're going to use least recently used. So this is going to get rid of the items in the cache that are, the, are not used as much as anything that is used regularly and that will keep that in the cache to all the regular use files. I'm going to click on next and we're going to leave this at the moment. Um, so we could, because we haven't got a volume, so we're going to just click on next at this stage and it's going to create a raid, new raid group. We can leave everything here at the moment and we'll come back to this later when we start creating volumes and then we're going to click on create. We're going to tick the box which is a warning about wiping the drive and we're going to select OK. Okay, so that's created our read-write drive, and as you can see here, the symbol showing read-write. Um, we get all the stats as, as and when we start using it, but that's it for the cache acceleration drive. So that is now synchronizing the RAID group, so we're going to leave that running. We're going to remove this from the screen there, and we're also going to remove that as well, because we're not interested in that. Okay, so the next thing is we want to go through and check on some security. So we're going into general settings first of all. We're just going to walk through all of the configuration. TLS version 1.2 is correct. That's what we want. Um, at the moment, we can see up here it's using uh, an unsecure port. So we're going to select force secure connection only. We're going to leave all of this stuff set as it is. Our time we already know, our daylight saving, automatically adjust it, code page is English, region is global, login screen is fine, and console management is it enabled. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to go to security. Okay, we're going to cancel that, we're going to apply it first of all. Let's log out and there we go, it's redirected us to HTTPS. You don't need to worry about the certificate at the moment. We're going to log back in. We don't want that to launch again. Close that down for now. Let's say OK to the storage volume. Let's continue with the security. First of all, Telnet and SSH, that is it. So we want to make sure that SSH is enabled and Telnet is disabled. Edit access permissions. I'm going to allow this user that we've just created to log in via SSH. And we're going to apply that configuration change. Okay, now we're going to go back and we make sure that our file services are enabled, standalone mode. Let's just go through this, check it. SMB3 highest, SMB1 lowest. Okay, so actually we're going to change this to be 
SMB2 is the lowest, not SMB1. Okay, Apple networking, correct, NFS. <clears throat> I'm going to enable NFS V4 as well. And we're going to disable FTP. It's not enabled, which is good. Okay, so let's go back down and make sure. that our web server is disabled which it is by default that's good because uh, they used to enable that by default so that is all we need to do in terms of security at the moment we will come back and we will set our access protection um, let's go through that so at the moment that is set so when we use an allow and deny list that will disable that so for now, we're going to add a network range, which is our LAN subnet. And add our 24-bit subnet and create that. And what we're also going to do is all of our clients that are going to be coming in and connecting to this, we're going to list those in here as well. So what that means is that only specific IP addresses will be able to connect to this NAS drive. Okay, and then you can see once you've set uh, uh, an allow and deny list, your IP access protection gets greyed out, but your account access protection stays. So all non-administrator group users, so anyone who's not an administrator basically, should have read that properly. We're going to apply that. So that's now the basics of the system completed. Um, what we're going to do following this video is we're going to run through another video creating the various volumes that we want to be using. But the first volume should always create in your RAID group is your system volume. Uh, and that's the volume where your applications are going to live. So we can have a look at our dashboard. Um, as you can see, everything looks good. Um, memory and CPU usage is there. Let's click on resource meter. This is where you can see more in-depth um, information about your system and what's going on. So the total physical network usage, average CPU, memory usage. Um, if we go into storage resources, again, we can see CPU, memory, network, and the graphics if, it, if you're using it. And then the storage resources um, we don't have any volumes at the moment. Um, pool activity, this shows you uh, what's going on. Nothing in there at the moment, obviously, but the raid activity um, will should start picking up once our um, raid group is synchronized. And then the disk activity, um, there'll be a little bit of disk activity going on, which shows the, um, the uh, raid synchronization on all the disks. And you can see that our M.2 um, caching activity is uh, is available to us as well. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and there's going to be plenty more videos um, on this QNAP coming up. So uh, stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.